Welcome, everyone. Welcome. Thanks for jumping in. Hey, listen, nobody ask what's next. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, as you guys are jumping on, I appreciate you. Thanks for coming on uh, live here. Uh, we just had a nice uh, rock and roller. Nice rock and roller. We had an earthquake. And uh, I, I listen, oh, man, it is... Uh, Let's, let's keep our eyes on Jesus. Can I get an amen? Can I get some hearts, some likes? Let's keep our eyes on Jesus. Eyes on Jesus. Let's put the blinders on. Everyone, let's see some hearts, please. Right now, you know, turn it up for Jesus. Let's see those hearts and uh, some amens right now. Everybody's going to put the blinders on right now where you're, where you're sitting down. Yeah. Let me know if you got blinders on and just saying, okay, Lord. All right. Loud and clear. We hear you. Yes, let's see those hearts. There you go. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> yeah, man. Watch party time. Mario, thanks for sharing it. Hey, if you could share this, it'd be awesome. I, 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 I know, you know, and I know that people need to hear right now some hope. People need to hear uh, the word. We're going to talk about, yes, topic at hand. Um, obviously, on top of the earthquake, it's like, you know, racial reconciliation um we're going to talk about a lot of good stuff i just want to have a conversation with you as a family here tonight um you know please you know continue to participate amen amen i see the amens coming in uh appreciate you all and uh we're gonna have a nice conversation here uh this evening and uh, you know i want to start off with praying as you, those of you who jumped on already we've been on here for a couple minutes <laughs> say hi camilo everybody that's that's my little boy. That's Camilo. He's getting ready to go to bed. Look at that hair on this kid. I'm jealous. I wish I had hair. <laughs> that's a whole other thing. You guys could pray, you know, for for Pastor Juan here. Wish I had hair. You know, it is what it is. And so, thankfully, here he's got his mom's uh, head full of hair. Look at him. <laughs> he's got my smile though. He's got my smile. Anyways, um, I want to pray because. Yeah, obviously it's important. It's it's our first go to. Good night, everyone. <laughs> That's Ava now uh, saying good night, everybody. But I know everybody's been feeling different emotions. Um, okay, good night. It, I know it's been hard for a lot of you. Uh, it's been you know some people have described this season as as horrific, uh, emotionally distressful, uh, painful, and heartbreaking and angry. Uh, hopeless, some helplessness, I mean, you name it, right? There's there's all kinds of feelings and emotions um, that, that people are feeling. So I, I want to pray with you before we get started. We're going to start with prayer. We're going to start with, uh, you know, raising the name of Jesus. And, uh, you know, so I want to pray for uh, the George Floyd family. I want to pray for Ahmaud Arbery's, you know, family. I want to pray for uh, Breonna Taylor's family, uh, Trayvon Martin's family. Um, pray for the police officers that are out, you know, out there, you know, risking their lives, you know, uh, trying to keep people safe, you know, uh, peaceful protests. And of course, you know, there's all kinds of craziness going on by, by a few people. And I'm gonna say a few, and we'll talk about that later uh, in our conversation. Uh, pray for business owners that are being impacted, affected by this. Uh, we're gonna pray uh, for our president, uh, all the governing authorities, uh, we're gonna pray, man. We're gonna we're gonna pray to Jesus. You know, uh, let the Holy Spirit, you know, uh, be our comforter, be our our counselor. And, and man, we're just gonna let it rain grace, mercy, and love. And and you know, there's a spirit that's against us. Well, we're gonna push back. You know, we're gonna push back against against that spirit. You know, because uh, Timothy told us, you know, that we should that God has given us not a spirit of fear or timidity but a spirit of power, of love, and, and a sound mind. Can I get an amen to that? So whether it's an earthquake, whether it's racism, uh, systemic injustice, oppression, depression, a pandemic that you know, everyone has seemed to have forgotten about, it's kind of in the back of people's minds, you know, uh, COVID-19, you know, uh, hey, as this stuff you know, comes, guess what? We're gonna push back, we're gonna, we're gonna actually pull down heaven on earth, you know, the Lord t taught us to pray, hey, let it be on earth as it is in heaven. Uh, you know, so you guys with me? So let's do this. Let's pray together. Uh, you know, while you're at your house, 
you know, as, as a sign of, of, you know, solidarity and as a sign of a posture of humility. If you can just open your hands like this. If you're driving, don't you dare do that. <laughs> you know, don't close your eyes. But, but I want you to you know, just uh, sit there with your hands open, you know, and, and we're just going to pray to God, okay? So let's pray. Heavenly Father, God, we just want to, uh, first of all, you know, God, just acknowledge you in our lives. We acknowledge your presence, Holy Spirit. We acknowledge that you are flooding us right now, that, Lord, that, that you, we're, we're asking you, God Almighty, to come in the presence right now of your children. Uh, God, we ask you to reign here on earth as it is in heaven. You know, God, we pray for peace. We pray, we pray, Heavenly Father, for your supernatural peace that just transcends all understanding, you know, for comfort, for those that are aching, that are hurting, you know, uh, you know, in their hearts and their minds from all the injustice, the oppression. Heavenly Father, for families, you know, again, like I mentioned, for the George Floyd family, Ahmaud Arbery family, Breonna Taylor's family, Trayvon Martin's family, for these families, Lord, and all of our uh, brothers and sisters, you know, African-American brothers and sisters in, in the communities. Lord, and the community, uh, you know, black community that is hurting right now, Lord, and, and they're making it known that enough is enough. God Almighty, you know what it is, you know, Heavenly Father, to see your people, you know, uh, you know, see your children be oppressed, you know, the marginalized, those that are voiceless, you know, Lord, those that, that, that never made it out of the womb, you know, to, to, you know, people struggling, Heavenly Father, financially, emotionally, spiritually, um, you know, God, physically, those that are sick, God, there's so much going on in our world, but Lord, we ask that you, again, you know, give them, you know, courage, uh, Lord, encourage them, edify them, bless them. Uh, Lord, we pray that we can be the church that you've called us to be, that in the midst of trials, persecution, in the midst of craziness going on in the world, Lord, that is when we shine the brightest. We ask you to use us, Heavenly Father. We ask, Lord, that you comfort, again, uh, not us, but only, but to comfort those, you know, Lord, uh, use us. You know, to be a beacon of light, Lord, to be, you know, that, that what you've called us to be, salt and light to this decaying and broken world. And Father, we pray for a hedge of protection around our police officers and all those that are out there peacefully protesting. You know, Lord, uh, this systemic, uh, you know, uh, oppression, this systemic, uh, you know, Lord, injustice. You know, we pray for, you know, change, for radical change and transformation, you know, peacefully. God, we pray for all the business owners and everyone that's being affected and impacted by the riots and the looting. Lord, we pray that, that they realize that there's a bigger picture to all of this, though, uh, especially our brothers and sisters in Christ. And, Lord, I pray for that, that peace that people can see when Christians are out there being salt and light and bringing peace, that there is a way to do this. You've taught us, Lord, you know, to, do, to, to love our neighbor you know, as ourselves. Lord, you taught us to, to actually look at others you know, uh, that, that are better than us, you know, to look at them through the eyes of your son, Jesus. God, we pray for our president, all the governing authorities, Lord, to make the, the decisions that they need to make with wisdom, Lord, with your truth, with your wisdom. And we pray for people to be not just whispering, but to maybe yelling it loud to these governing officials, you know, all the way down to the cities, to the towns, you know, Lord, all the way up to the president's, uh, you know, the White House. And Lord, to, to see that we're crying out, just like, Lord, what matters is that you see us. And, and Lord, nothing, nothing is overlooked by you. You know, Lord, your word tells us in 1 Peter 4, 8, what's most important of all, and that's to continue to show deep love for each other. For love covers a multitude of sins. And God, you also said, Lord Jesus, that, that, you, that you gave us a new command is to love each other. And, 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 and because you have loved us. And so we should love each other because our love for one another is going to prove that the world, that the world, to prove to the world that we are your disciples. And so, God, we just pray again that during the midst of darkness and, and earthquakes and, and all this stuff, that we remain, God, focused on you. And, Lord, as we get into the time of conversation and your word, search us, O oh God, and, and know our anxious thoughts and point out anything in us that offends you whether that's racism, prejudice, whether that's pointing the finger, you know, blaming all this on whomever, you know, we think, you know, it's at fault. Lord, help us not to fall into the devil's schemes, you know, uh, of, of walking around offended. That's his tactic and, and divisiveness. And God, so lead us along the path of everlasting life. 
And we pray all these things in Jesus' mighty name. And everyone said, amen, amen, amen. And let me see those hearts and some likes. Let me see you all. Come on. Come on. I know if you prayed with me, I appreciate you guys, you know, being here. And so, there they come. I love it. Amen. It's good. It's good. Hey, so um, I just want to have a, a conversation with you all, you know, this evening, again, I'm going to get into God's word. And I want to let you know, you know, that, you know, there's a lot obviously going on with, uh, you know, uh, this, the racial injustice and, and you're seeing a ton of stuff in media. And um, I, I, want, I want to talk to you as not necessarily as, as a pastor, but a brother in Christ. But I know, I know that if you're tuning in, you know, it's an honor and privilege that if you, you know, see me as, as your pastor or one of the pastors that, that, you know, you listen to for God's word, man, I, again, it's an honor and privilege, you know, to speak to you. Um, more importantly, to speak, you know, allow the Holy Spirit to speak through me to you about what's going on and how I'm feeling, how you're feeling, and just be, you know, completely, you know, honest, transparent with you and just open about, you know, everything that's going on. And so, but I also want to tell you, you know, there's some things, some do's and don'ts. Um, and just be completely transparent with you. You know, I know a lot of you, you know, I've had conversations with and, and you're asking, well, I, you know, I, I don't know what to do during this situation. I don't know what to say. I don't know what to post. I don't want to you know, put my foot in my mouth. Um, I want to do something. I want to be proactive. I want to be um, against this, which you should be. Let me tell you, you should be in a peaceful way. Um, and, and we should, you know, say something about, you know, what's going on. It's not okay. You've heard me say this. And if you saw the message last weekend, then if you haven't, go check it out on YouTube at the Well of AB. You know, I, I, I preached about this and said that, you know, we can't just sit with our mouths closed or, or let me speak, you know, particularly here to, you know, Hispanics, Latinos, and, and be like, well, okay, well, that's not our problem, right? That's that's the black folks, you know, problem. It's not ours. Listen, it's a it's a human, it's a human problem. First and foremost, let's just squash that and just tell you, we're, when when a person, a human being that is made in the image of God, is suffering from injustice. Right, it's a human problem. We all need to get involved, especially the church, especially the church. God has called us to be a voice for the voiceless. And so let me give you some more context, okay? Because I, I just don't want to keep rambling here. Um, but I know in the past, I'm gonna share with you because I'm always transparent with you and I always wanna be uh, the first person to admit and confess as, as a brother in Christ and as your pastor, just be like, hey, Listen, I don't have it all together. There's certainly things that I go, I don't understand completely. Um, I can't say, you know, uh, uh, you know I, can, I, I can try to empathize, be compassionate. Of course, that's what God, God calls me to be, empathetic and compassionate, and try to understand where that person is coming from and not rationalize it or justify it or uh, be indifferent towards what I'm seeing and, and, and just sit there and, or, or take information in just because it's being fed to me and not question it also. Okay, we have to think, you know, God gave us this amazing ability. So, and he says in his word in Romans 12 2, do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. And so when we conform to patterns of this world, you know, when, when we were our, the old person before we came to Christ, and we're Christians, we have been given this, this new life, this, this transformation that is only given by Jesus Christ, and, and we're the, we've got this wonderful deposit of the Holy Spirit in us, we're not supposed to think and act like, our old, like the old person that we used to be. And yes, I'm talking specifically with prejudice, uh, racism, you know, think about people as second-class citizens, or, or not care, or not give two cents about you know, this race, this ethnicity, I mean, we can't do that. You know, again, God's word says that we are all made in the image of God. And so, but I, I, I want to side with you and I understand, and I want to speak to you that you guys go, man, I, I don't know what to post. I don't know what to say, but I want to be in this. And so what I've been doing, I want you to know as your pastor, 
is I've taken on the the challenge, if you will, and, and I don't even know how else to say it. I've, I've taken the responsibility, I'm gonna say this. I've, been, I've taken on the responsibility to say, you know what, it's not enough. It's important to pray, hear me out, but it's not enough. I, I need to take action. And so I want you to know what I've done is I, I'm reaching out to different friends, pastor friends, you know, uh, from different colors, different races, white, black, Hispanic, and then these are leaders in different churches. Some lead all Latino, all Hispanic churches. Some lead primarily all white churches. Uh, you know, some lead all black churches. And, and particularly, I had a conversation yesterday for about an hour, over an hour, hour and 15 minutes with a very good friend of mine, um, you know, African-American guy, phenomenal, extremely brilliant guy, uh, graduated from a prestigious university um, you know, he lives in the South and, uh, you know, he's originally from, from Georgia and, you know, now I was living in another state uh, in, in the area. And I had this conversation and I said, listen, I need to reach out because I want to understand more and I, I want to be in the fight with them, you know, um, and again, positive, peaceful, peaceful. And so I reached out and I had a great hour and 15 minute conversation, you know, with, with, you know, my black friend who's a pastor, um, he's, a, he's a church planter. That means he started churches and uh, he's actually, you know, helped us, you know, plant, you know, this church and, and, and you know, helps others right now. Currently, they're in, in through the middle of all this planting churches. And so I said, hey, bro, I said, explain to me, talk to me, because I want to know more in detail. You know, I, I, I want to walk in your shoes, if you will. I know it's impossible to do. But talk to me, you know, uh, let me know what's going on, like in, in your heart, in your mind. And I could tell you that it was just, again, just you could just feel, you could feel the tension, you can feel the heaviness, uh, you can feel just like the shoulders down, you can feel like, I mean, it, just the injustice. And again, and this has been going on for 400 plus years, 400 plus years, so it's not something that just popped up. And I hope you understand that, you know, with George Floyd, uh, we go back just to Ahmaud Arbery just in February and you go back and keep going back all the way. I can just remember when I was a kid, 1991, 92, Rodney King. And then we go back into the 60s, the 50s, right? Uh, civil rights movement. You keep going further back 400 years when African-Americans were brought to this country, you know, as slaves and they were property, literally property. And so one of the things that he taught me was, he said, Juan, he goes, I want you to know that that churches, churches from inception, from the time they get, we call them planted, right? By the time they get started, they're, they're, they're planted differently. And I said, how so? Talk to me about that. He said, well, I want you to know, he said that black churches have always been rooted with civil rights advocacy. I said, really? He said, yeah, he goes, and, and the majority, which are white evangelical churches led by white pastors, he goes, those churches are more celebratory. I said, interesting. I said, well, what is, I said, explain further. He said, yeah, he goes, when you think about the message that is given every weekend at, at, a, at a service that is primarily, again, non-black, right? Versus a church that is primarily or all black. He said, there's, there's a message always in the black church of, justice of hope uh, of of the promised land and i go that totally makes sense he said but when you go to a non-black church he goes it's always about celebratory in other words it's about hey you can have salvation in christ and you can live a good moral life right live a good life and that's basically it and that's what's primarily preached it's very uh, the context of it is basically it is, is receive Jesus in Christ, Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you know, um, you know, turn your life around, you know, be sure there's hope there. Of course, there's hope, right? Salvation. And, and you can live a good moral life and then, you know, live a good life as best as you can. And then you're going to have heaven guaranteed. But when it comes to a black church, he said, man, he goes, if, if you don't talk about justice, you don't talk about hope, about there being a promised land of getting out of oppression, getting out of injustice that we've been living for the past 400 years. He goes, 
He goes, you're not going to grab the attention of many, of many black people. And I was like, man, that is powerful. I said, man, I said, I appreciate that. And so he goes, think about this. He goes, right now, he said, we're lamenting again. We're lamenting. And I said, okay. I said, I agree with you 100% because of what's happened. Another black man has been murdered and, you know, due through uh, uh, police brutality. He said, but let me ask you this question. He goes, when, do you, when was the last time that, that white America, the white church, or uh, let's just say the, 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 the white America, when was the last time that they lamented? He said, you know when that was? He goes, 9-11. He said, why? Because it, it, was, it was America. America was hit, was hit, right? In New York at the Twin Towers, 3,000 plus people you know, died. He said that that was the last time that they lamented as as a church or as as a community together. He goes, and before that, when was it? The Great Depression. And I, and I, I sat there and I go, I, I, I'm getting it's it's about listening. And here's where we're missing it. I, I I firmly believe that we're we're we. I'm saying all of us we're missing, just listening and not not putting in our two cents. Not saying, well, what about this or, or but, or but, you know, we say something good and then we totally, I mean, just mess it up by saying, but, you know, oh yeah, you know, this is good, but, and it's like, we're, we're not listening. We're not sitting and learning and listening and really being empathetic and, and, and really trying to put ourselves in, in their shoes. And so we talked further and, and we talked about you know, churches reopening up. And again, you know, he helps, you know, churches plant and churches, you know, get started. And he was saying, he goes, Juan, I want you to know that, that the black primarily, he's in the South. He said, primarily black churches are, are not ready to open up. He goes, they don't want to go back to open up. There's no urgency, you know, from, from again, from where I live in the South, right? East coast, South. He's like, we're not ready to open up. I said, why so? He goes, well, we forget that we're in a pandemic still. I said, that's, that's very true. He said, and guess who, guess who COVID-19 is impacting the most? And I was like, you're right. I said, African-American people and Hispanics, you know, here in California, you know, in Los Angeles, there's 50,000 plus cases. And if you look at the numbers, right, the numbers don't lie. I said, you're absolutely right. He said, so a lot of churches, you know, are, are ready to open. But when you look at the black community, he goes, again, this is from my African-American pastor friend saying this. And I was like, oh, man, I said that that totally makes sense. You know what he said, which was it totally made sense. He goes, listen, the day that the NFL, the NBA, right, all these big professional sports teams go back to doing what they do, going back to normal business, he goes, that's when we'll open back up ourselves. You guys with me? Give me a thumbs up. Let me know if you're listening here, if you're taking notes and you're really just saying, hey, I want to learn. I want to grow. I want to know, you know, I, I need to empathize. I need to understand, you know, besides outside of my area of influence, my circle, you know, I, I want to learn. I want to hear. I, I want to know what's going on in, in the mindset and in the hearts of, you know, our black brothers and sisters. Let me see them. All right. And I said, yeah, you're right. I said, most people of color, most people of color are the ones that are getting sick and are dying. And, and so we, we need to do better, right? We need to do better. And, and, and one of the things that, that he challenged me, and, and I want to pass that challenge on to you, is if you grabbed your cell phone right now, if you grabbed your cell phone, right? If you grabbed your cell phone and you opened it up to your contacts, you opened it up to your contacts, and and you scroll through it how many how many of your contacts are i'm going to say right here directly are african american how many you know it's it's for you to really you know to really know that and are we intentional and here as the church again i'm speaking to the church i can only hold you to god's standards if, you know and we can hold everybody accountable against being anti-racist, 100%. But when we're children of God, 
right? We, we're, we're to hold one another accountable, not my standard, God's standards. And so he challenged me and he said, Juan, he goes, I, I really, I said, what would you tell us as, as non-black, right? Colored still, colored or white, you know, our, my white friends and brothers, what would you tell him? He said, man, he goes, I, I would say right now is to be intentional more than anything to be, to be a good listener, to listen and, and to really be intentional with creating new relationships with people that don't look like you. And I was like, amen, you know, because then I'm going to tell you why, you know, if we look at revelation, I'm going to use some scripture now here. If we look at revelation seven, revelation seven, nine to 10, I'm going to read this to you. Revelation seven, nine, 10 says this, this is, this is the, the apostle John, you know, again, already in, I'm going to use quote unquote, Lucy in his deathbed. And he gets this dream, this revelation. And the book is called revelation. And, and he talks about what he saw in this dream. And this is what he saw. He saw heaven. And he said, after this, I looked and there before me, listen to this, there before me was a great multitude that no one could count from every nation, every tribe, every language. Listen to that. Standing before the throne and before the lamb, before Jesus. And they were wearing white robes and they were holding palm branches in their hands. And they cried out in a loud voice. And this is what they said. Salvation belongs to God who sits on the throne and to the lamb. And so I want you to know is that that racial reconciliation is going to happen no matter what. Listen, there's a vision and God is God has given us that vision in the book of Revelation already. He's showed it to us. He's revealed it to us. And so no matter what's happening, happening today with rioting and looting, you know, listen, it doesn't mean we don't act. It doesn't mean that we don't go forth and do the kingdom of do the work of the kingdom. But I want you to know that that from the founding of this of this country, this has been a struggle. You know, this has been something that that we've all have to dealt with, that we've had all have to deal with. And, and, but God has given us this picture of what it's going to be like in Revelation. He says that through John, he says that every nation, every tongue, and that every tribe, in other words, every color, every race, is going to be worshiping God around his throne, saying, worthy is the Lamb. But I want you to know that we don't have to wait until that day. And did you guys know that? We don't have to wait until that day. You see, we can start today. Listen to me. Racial injustice is not new. You know this, I've been telling you this and you know this, you know, we study it in, in history class. You know, this, this has been going on forever, but I want you to know that God decided to do something about it by telling us and sending us right now in the middle of this, again, spiritual warfare, you know, his children, me and you, you know, we need to deal with it. You see, and Jesus gave us his instructions. That's the Bible. You know, you've heard me say this acronym, it's the B-I-B-L-E these basic instructions before leaving earth, right? And, and he tells us how to deal with these things, you know, on earth as it is in heaven. And if you look at Matthew chapter six, verse 10, you know, Jesus, you know, you know, taught his disciples how to pray. His disciples looked at Jesus and said, hey, Jesus, you know, can you teach us how to pray? And he said to them, yeah, I'll teach you how to pray. And he, and he gave them the Lord's prayer. Remember that, the Lord's prayer? You know, I learned that way back in the days when, when I was Catholic. You know, it's our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Let your kingdom come. Let your will be done on earth as it is. Where, everybody? Let me hear it. In heaven, as it is in heaven. And so if you look at the Lord's Prayer through the eyes of, of what we're talking about here, through racial reconciliation, you know, we know the picture that he has given us, right? Which is, which is to look like heaven right here where? On earth as it is in heaven. And what do we do? We're supposed to worship God. We're supposed to, you know, praise God, pray to him and live, listen to this, live together in unity. And then, but we have to ask ourselves, ask yourself right now, am I living my life right now the way as I read it in the scriptures? Am I living my life right now the way that I read it and see it, right? As it's, as it's what's going to happen in heaven. And if, and if we really take a hard look in the mirror, which is what my friend was challenging me to do, and I hope that we can all admit that, that there are some rooted things, every single one of us, you know, some rooted things that we have in our, from our past 
you know, whether it came from our parents, whether it came from our grandparents, or, or the people that we used to hang around with or still do, or, or a racist boss that you work for, and, and you got to hear his comments. You know, again, you know, it's, again, one of my favorite verses, you'll hear me always say this, in the Bible is Romans 12, 2, like I said earlier, is to not conform again to the pattern of this world, but be transformed of the renewing of our minds. And so, so the challenge that God is giving us is, is what our mission statement here at the church is, at the well, is, is to be like Jesus, do what Jesus did, right, in order to have the life that he promised us. And again, he gives us this picture, you know, but we can be blessed now. You know, John 10, 10 says that, that, that the enemy, the thief, comes to steal, kill, and destroy. But Jesus said, I came to give you life, life to the fullest. And so, you know, a lot of us, again, we need to admit that we've been programmed, you know, since birth, you know, to act a certain way, you know, towards others because of their, their skin color, because of their race, or, the, or even, check this out, even their socioeconomic status. And that doesn't necessarily mean for, to colored people, but, you know, we treat others because they're doing well financially, you know, so we, we think that we got to roll the red carpet out, you know, for these people as well. And so you got to ask yourself, you know, why did Jesus send his son? Well, he sent his son to destroy this sin called racism. And he, he sent his son Jesus so he can make us part of, listen to me, part of his race. Part of his race. And we need to reprogram our minds, you know, looking at the scripture. And, and I want you to listen to what Paul says. He says in Galatians 3, 26, 28, this is what he says. He says, so in Christ Jesus, you are all all not just you guys that are listening right now but everybody you are all children of god through faith for all of you were baptized into christ have clothed yourselves with christ you know there is neither jew nor gentile neither slave nor free nor nor is there male and female he says you know this is paul again but this is this is god speaking through paul to the church in galatia telling him for you are all one in christ jesus so what does God do? God invites us into his family and he washes away all of our sins and he wants to reprogram every single one of us so that we can be, do, and have. You know, what, what he has, he wants to give it to us, his new family. And so what does Jesus have? Great question. You're asking, well, what does Jesus have? Well, he has love, he has grace, he has mercy, he has justice, he has uh, humility, and he has this thing called, hey, if you get slapped in the cheek, he says what? Slap him back. No, he doesn't. He says what? He says, turn the other cheek, Juan. Turn the other cheek. Because I've done it. He, he's given us the example, right? He wants us to recognize, you know, he wants us to be recognized by these things. What things again, Pastor? Well, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, gentleness, goodness, faithfulness, and self-control. See, then he says, Right? This is, here's the two greatest commands. Love me and love your neighbor as yourself. Right? He didn't just say, hey, love your black friends, love your white friends, love your, you know, uh, illegal immigrant friends, or love your poor friends, or love your Democrat friends, or your Republican friends. He didn't say that. He said, love your neighbor. And who's your neighbor? Everyone. Everybody that you, that you're, that you come in, in contact with and everyone that's around you. That's who your neighbor is. Everyone that you do life with. Again, even if they're not Christian, it's even better to live like this. It's like carrying a backpack with you and pulling out these, these gifts of the Holy Spirit and saying, boom, somebody offends me. Here you go. Here's forgiveness. Here you go. I'm going to show you love. Here's the other cheek. Is it easy? Of course not. It's not supposed to be easy. It wasn't easy for Christ Jesus. It wasn't easy for him to get spat upon by by quote unquote, his own people, by people from the opposite race, you know, different religions, right? Different traditions, different faith, you know, diff different socioeconomic statuses, you know, for, from the government, you know, the, the Roman empire that was in place at that time. Again, it's not supposed to be easy. It's going to be uncomfortable for us here on earth until we get to heaven. And so we get to hold each other accountable. And so how, how's that accountability? Well, whatever we post on Facebook, on social media, again, ha has to be salt and light, has to be something that brings hope, right? We can't fall into this picking sides thing. You know, the only side that we have, the only side that we get to pick is our new race. And what's that new race? The race of saying, I am a Christian. I am a Christ follower. 
I am a child of God and I need to represent my heavenly father the best way that I can here on earth. Because I need, I need, we need to bring you know, heaven down to earth. But I want you to know that, that unfortunately, as Christians, you know, we, we have this tendency to act just like the world sometimes, right? Or say things that, that represent the world instead of, instead of being ambassadors of Christ, that like 2 Corinthians 5 says. And, and as we've received forgiveness, we've received grace, we've received mercy, we need to extend this forgiveness, this grace and mercy towards others as well. Again, not keep our mouths shut, but stand up for the voiceless, the oppressed, right? You know, we, 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 we get to do that ourselves. So I remind you again, and I want to read this. I want to read this because I looked at it in a, in a different translation. And, and this is a paraphrase. It's in the message. And it's 2 Corinthians 5, 16, 17. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verses 16, 17. And this is what it says in the message translation. I love it. I hope, you, I hope, you, I hope it, it really penetrates your heart right now. This is what it says. It says, This is Paul writing a letter to the church in Corinth. He says, because of this decision, in other words, accepting Jesus, right? The good news and him as Lord and Savior. He said, we don't evaluate people by who, listen to this, by who they, who they have been or how they look. Did you hear that? How they look. We don't evaluate them that way. He says, because we looked at the Messiah that way once and we got it all wrong. Now he's speaking to Jews. These are converted Jews into Christianity. And he's saying, remember how we used to look at Christ? Remember how I used to look at you Jews, right? That's going crazy as, what are you guys believing? You're following into this this cult, this this Christianity. You're following this Jesus guy. And he's saying, we got it all wrong. As you know, we certainly don't look at him that that way anymore, he says. Now we look, what does he say? He, He goes, we look inside. In other words, the character of the person. And what we see is that anyone united with the Messiah, anyone united with Jesus Christ, he said, gets a fresh start and they're created new. He says the old life, right? He's speaking to us. The old life is gone and a new life burgeons. That means it just comes out. It, it's coming out of you know, the, the shadows. Now you're, you're in the light. You're a new creation in Christ. He says, look at it. You know, all this comes from God who settled the relationship between us and him. In other words, we were, we were separated from God because of our sin. And racism, prejudice is sin. And so as Christians, as Christ followers, we shouldn't, we shouldn't have these, these glasses, these lenses of, of our fleshly selves, of who we used to be, if, if that would now admit it. Again, we all have this sin. You know, I used to belong to a recovery ministry and we used to say, hi, my name is Juan. I used to introduce myself this way. Hi, my name is Juan. I am a follower of Jesus Christ. I am a child of God. That's where my identity is. And I'd say, and I struggle with, and I used to say, I struggled with sexual addiction. I struggle with pride. In other words, I would name the sin that I struggle with. And I firmly believe that a lot of us have to look in the mirror. You've heard me probably say this on the weekend. Maybe, you know, this is your first time hearing this, or maybe it's clicked today where we need to admit, some of us need to repent. We need to fall to our knees and say, listen, hi, my name is, and you say your name, and you say, I am a Christ follower now. You know, Paul says, you know, through, through God's spirit in his word, I, my old, the old person that I used to be, yes, you know, a racist, a prejudice, a person that would look down on people, that would dehumanize others, you know, call them oh, illegal immigrants, you know, treat them like dogs, uh, you, know, uh, uh, you know, they're black, they're this or that, they deserve what they get. That's your old per- that's the old person. But now that you are in the race of Christ, you are a new creation, right? We need to fight against those things and we can't have those things. You know, we can't see through the lens of the old person that we used to be. Can I get an amen to that, right? And so since we're in this topic at hand, which is racism, I wanna ask you a question. I wanna ask you this. How can we, as new creations in Christ Jesus, how can we reconcile people to God? Because that's our mission. And if you read that chapter, 2 Corinthians 5, it says that we have been given a commission, a mission. And that stems all the way to Matthew 28, 19, 20, where it's the great commission. Jesus commissions us to go and, you know, uh, you know, basically make more disciples. Okay. So how can me and you, as new creations in Christ, reconcile people to God 
if we still look at the exterior of a person first or their social economic status, right? Or, or the color of their skin, we can't, right? And, and this message again is for everybody. See, we all know people in our lives that maybe are still racist. You've seen them put posts, you've seen them say stuff. Uh, maybe they haven't posted, but maybe you know, in, in the, in the, in, at home or comments on the side or you know, maybe your own thoughts, you know, have, again, prejudice, you know, uh, and again, all this stuff, and here's my point, all right? Racism is not a black or white thing, all right? Again, even though that's like the front of it, you know, we see day in and day out, or we're seeing what's happening to it, but it's an all people issue. And when we accept Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, he gives us a new title, and he gives us a new life, which means that our old way of thinking, our racist thoughts, our comments and actions, you know, they should be gone with our old lives. And so let, let, me, let me unpack this a little bit, you know, uh, and, and, and this is, hopefully it makes sense for you big time, okay? You know, I want you to know that, you know, uh, Dr. Tony Evans, man, the way he put this, I mean, it, it blew my mind. And, and one of the things that he said, he said that most people, listen to this, most people identify themselves as white Christians, as black Christians, as Hispanic Christians, right? So, so in other words, the word Christian is in the place where the noun is. When I, when I heard this, you know, again, I didn't say this, this was Dr. Tony Evans, you know, preached this and I was just like, this blew my mind. He said, the word Christian is in the place where the, where the noun is and, and your ethnicity, in other words, your identity is in the adjective position. And he said that the adjective, right, always describes whatever the noun is. And so he said that, that we, as Christians, we cannot put Christian as the noun, right? That as Christians, we, Christian, the, the, the word needs to be the adjective. And here's why he said that. He said, so that whatever we do, however we do it, wherever we are, Christian, describes what we are so we need to say we need to say hey i am a christian father or your christian mother or i'm a christian business owner i'm a christian his hispanic I, i'm a christian african-american i'm a christian anglo-american you see the difference because if we don't listen to me if, listen to me because if we don't put it in the adjective then we always have to conform our christianity to our ethnicity. What do you think? You see, so we need to be Christians first, right? We need to be biblical first. And in order to do that, we, we need to disassociate with some things that, that, that we have grown and accustomed to, you know, being normal in our lives. And that includes me. That includes all of us. You see, again, God, remember, God made you a new creation. The old has passed away and he has given you a new identity okay so again again just sharing you this information so what can we do right there were some things that my friend and i we talked about uh and, and it's powerful you know uh, of course you know there has to be reform you know of our justice system uh, maybe you heard today or maybe you haven't heard it you know heard it you haven't heard yet uh, it was announced today you know earlier this afternoon um you know that that the remaining three officers you know, who actually, you know, stood by and did nothing to stop, um, you know, the former officer, Derek Chavez, you know, from killing George Floyd. He, he's now, they've all been charged, you know, with aiding and abetting murder. And office, Officer Chauvin, um, you know, has been upgraded to second degree uh, by the Minneapolis Attorney General, Keith Ellison. And so as we voice and, and say, hey, these things, these things should not be happening, and we sign petitions, you know, we join grassroots movements and we partner with, again, peacefully with our African-American, you know, uh, brothers and sisters. And we say, hey, what can I do? There, there's, we need to take action. Maybe it ain't protesting out there. I get that. All right. Maybe you can, you know, support by giving financially, you know, um, you know, again, here, let me tell you something. I, I didn't know this. There has to be reform in our justice system. I said that right now. And 50 states in the United States 
have a, a have a no hate crime bill and there's only four states that actually um you know that that have it that don't have it and so one of the states is georgia and this is where right now the case of Ahmad arbery is, is being tried and so right now you know uh you know brothers like sam collier and there's other you know other activists and other pastors you know are are joining together to to again change that you know to change the system you know so again so there could be a fair you know trial and so that there will be justice you know done you know for these families that you know have lost their loved ones due to you know um uh, racial injustice you know racism and so again there has to be systemic change and, and but we we get to as the church we get to again lead this way and help and, and reach out and again be empathetic be compassionate and listen and listen and and at the same time again you know take action and so we need to lament again we need to listen i appreciate you if you stayed on here long enough and, and heard you know this message and and i want you to know that you know my heart you know hurts and breaks for anyone you know but you know i want you to know that we can do more we can use our voice and and a lot of you have influence like i said this past weekend you know, we have influence and we got to use our influence uh, to speak against this. And so, you know, I, I want you to also be, you know, careful to, you know, when you're having conversations is not to engage, you know, with people, you know, online, you can take the conversation offline. There's another, you know, nugget wisdom that, that my friend gave me and said, hey, man, you know what? Um, I said, what do you do when people, you know, post stuff and say stuff that you just don't agree with? And you're just like, man, I can't believe they're saying that. He said, you know, I invite him, I give him my cell phone number and, and I invite him to have a conversation offline, you know, but I, because again, so much is lost in translation. So much is lost in, in you know, just hiding behind the keyboard and, and posting out of a, a, an emotional rage, um, you know, something that somebody else posted and, and you, you, you chase that rabbit trail. And again, you're not thinking I'm a Christ follower first. You're thinking, whatever it is that the enemy begins to, you know, again, we're in spiritual warfare and the enemy, again, what he uses, his strategy is division. He wants to divide us. He wants us all to pick sides. And again, there's no side except for being on Jesus side. And we have been called, here's the, here's what I'm you know, closing this with. We have been called to be reconcilers, right? To reconcile broken, lost, hurting, oppressed people, you know, that, that are still in the world that act like the world. And, and we need to, again, bring them in and say, listen, there is a better way. And yes, I empathize. I am compassionate. I, I, I want to know more and, and understand the acting out, right? The, the rioting, the looting. And we need to, again, listen, listen, and not be quick to judge and be, you know, and be like, boom, they, okay, they, they, that should have been, I go, wait a minute, okay, we, again, listen first, and put, and put ourselves in, in the shoe of other people, in the shoes of other people, okay, I love you all, I appreciate you, um, you know, again, please, if there's something you want to talk about more in detail, you know, I'll give you my number right now, I'm going to post it right here, I always give it, um, if you want to have a conversation, you know, um, you know, take this offline and discuss further. Maybe, you know, you need prayer, you're, you're struggling. Um, you know, there's my number. You got my number, call me. I'd love to, you know, have a conversation with you, pray with you and, and um, discuss this further. If you need, you know, more understanding, let you know uh, what more we're doing, but reach out. I want you to know also that I've reached out to all the police officers that I know that I have on my cell phone right we support our police officers uh we're praying for them i i literally have had conversations where one of these police officers was literally you know called from van nuys to go all the way to la and you know because they need backup you've seen how they're overwhelmed and he's like hey pastor i'm doing 15 16 hours today you know the next morning i call them the next morning because we get in touch but we're texting Finally got him on the phone. It was 10 a.m. He's like, I just got up. I've been up all night. And, uh, you know, there's been tons of arrests. And we've been, people have been throwing frozen water bottles at us, eggs. Uh, I mean, you name it. And, I mean, they've been called every name, you know, 
from the alphabet and not in a positive light, uh, you know. And so again, uh, we're praying for our police officers, praying for the National Guard, we're praying for our country. And uh, I want you, to, I want you as all of us as the church to do better, right? To, to love like Jesus, to see people through the eyes of Jesus, but also take action. If you need tools or more information on what to do, take action, be a part of, you know, a grassroots movement. Again, there's my number. You can call or, or reach out, text. Um, we'd love to have a conversation with you and, and discuss further. Thank you guys for uh, Brittany. I mean, everybody that's, that's hopped on here this evening, I appreciate you. I hope this blessed you. I hope this encouraged you. Hope this uh, opened your mind, your heart a little bit more. Let me see some likes and some hearts if this has helped you. But again, you know, I'm leading the way. You know, I want you to know that, that we're leading this charge. And, uh, you know, I want you to do the same is to reach out, get out of your comfort, get out of your comfort zone and start being the bridge. Okay. What's our mission statement? Help people be like Jesus, do what Jesus did in order to have the life that he's promised us, right? In heaven, but on earth while we're here. And, you know, when he, when the Lord decides to come back and, and get all of us, you know, we already know what the vision looks like in Revelation 7, 9, 10. All tongue, all, all nations, right? Everyone's going to be there praising and worshiping our Lord, you know, in heaven and, and on a new earth. I love you guys. God bless you. Thank you for being here. I look forward to seeing you on Sunday as we continue in our series, 14 Life Hacks and How to Live a Blessed Life. And we're looking at the Sermon on the Mount. And, and Jesus talks about all kinds of different things and how, you know, 14 different weeks, uh, 14 different things that we're looking at. So we're going to tackle these a, as we continue to be in this series. And I want to invite you again. So it's 8 a.m., 10 a.m., or 8 p.m. I love you guys. Appreciate you. Have a good night. God bless you.